Okay, so here we go, the final part of the armor build itself. So we are missing one main piece of it, which we now have. So we've now got our Mandalorian bucket. I did ask if people wanted to see me modify an existing one or go for like a kit or a print. And I know a lot of people want to see me modify one already. And I was going to use a Cosplay Sky one, but the way they've made it, it's out of a rubber and there's literally like nothing I can do to make it look decent. Uh, so I got my friend Mol to 3D print this for me. You can uh, get people who 3D print stuff professionally. Files like this are widely available online now. A lot more people are doing 3D printing. So that's what we're going to go for for this. Because the helmet is really the centerpiece of the whole thing. And I really wanted to get it to look right. So obviously this is the main base of the helmet. And we also have the earpieces that go on the side. Separately 3D printed. I do see a lot of people 3D printing helmets. And not actually sanding their prints. That's one thing I will stress to people to do. Please, please, please sand your prints because, yes, yeah, so this is a really nice clean print. The lines are quite minimal, but you just paint straight over this and you can just see the lines and it just looks horrible. It just looks like you haven't put any real time into it. And honestly, just a little bit of sanding will just really bring it up nicely. I know it's a right pain in the butt, but it's, it's something that everyone should really get to doing. I know I hate sanding, but trust me, it's worth it. So we're going to sand this. We're going to prime it, prep it, get it ready for paint. So we're going to use the same paint that we've used for the body armor on this. We're going to use that nicer metal paint. And then once that's done, everything then has to be weathered. So I've used my airbrush a couple of times now. And we also have the sidearm that's been printed as well. So at least we have something in our holster and I'll leave the main blaster for another video at a later date. Right, so to begin with, we've just got to give this just a quick base sand. So I'm just going to get some fine grit sandpaper. Just go over this just to flat it off a little bit to get it ready for filler primer. So here's what the primer looks like sprayed on. As you can see, done a little bit of um, overspray with some black, just so I can see where we've been once we sand it. And uh, the rest of it, as you can see, has been wet sanded, so it's really nice and smooth. You can still kind of see some lines uh, poking through, so we're obviously going to have to go over it with another coat. But see, the ears haven't been gone over super solidly because we just need to glue stuff on top. But you can kind of see what it's like there when you start scrubbing it away with the, the black spray paint on top so you can see the line still poking through there but the rest of it really really clean so obviously we just got to do this bit now but I thought I'd show you guys sort of the difference between sanded and unsanded so just using some uh, 600 grit wet and dry just going over this just taking the time with it and then it'll be a case of doing another layer because obviously we've got some sort of deeper grooves in there. Uh, seeing how smooth that layer comes out and then uh, just getting it ready for paint because we're going to do the same metal paint we've done with the chest piece. Uh, so hopefully that's going to look real, real nice. Okay, so we're going to make a start with the weathering on our armor bits now. So I'm just going to go over certain bits with an airbrush and then do the rest by hand just because I want a couple of different textures on over there. And I've decided not to do the fully weathered sort of end of season look because I've been looking at the best gar armor for too long now and I really like it shiny so we're going to do lighter weathering but still enough that it looks pretty cool.
Alright, next up we are gonna make our little mud horn. Now I was thinking about buying one because you can get pre-made mud horns which are like the nice shiny chrome ones, but then I was thinking there's no guarantee it would actually fit to the sort of the curvature of my shoulder bells. I mean with certain things you could probably get it to fit by like gently using a heat gun and forming it over, but then there's no guarantee that it would actually do it without damaging what you've paid for. So I thought, you know what, we're just gonna sculpt a mud horn. So as you can see, I've got the shoulder bell that the mud horn's gonna go on. I've just wrapped it up in cling film because I'm going to use Milliput and I'm going to sculpt it straight onto the cling film just so I know it will stick to the curvature and it'll be where I want it and then when it's all dry I peel it off obviously cling film the whole thing because I don't want to get like excess Milliput on any of my paintwork because then it's a it's a pain to get off really. So Milliput is basically just um, a fine little sort of sculpting kind of clay thing. You can use it to repair things obviously you sculpt stuff as well so it's basically a two-part mixture so you cut off what you need mix it all together and then you can sculpt and uh, what you can also do is you can sculpt it with water uh, so you can like smooth the edges down and really take your time over it because it does take a while to set and once it's set I can pretty much paint straight onto it so I'm going to paint onto it with a nice silver and just put a gloss lacquer over the top to try and bring out uh, the nice silver underneath so it's a bit more of a colour difference to the shoulder bell which is actually something that's quite noticeable in uh, especially the final episode is the mud horn is very very silver compared to the sort of weather down dirtiness of the rest of his armour so that's what we're going to do. sanding and filling later because of some imperfections which you can still kind of just see on the camera um, with 3d print I think we're at a point that we can actually just paint this um, so I've gone over it with filler and the filler primer a couple of times wet sanded it all down um, so it's a lot smoother than it was uh, just wanted to take the time over it because I know that when you spray on something that is just one clear color especially like this which is also reflective it will pick up a bunch of imperfections so I did not want to rush this at all um, but here we go we have now got it primed sanded and uh, this is pretty much ready to paint now so we're painting it with the same paints we've done for the armor which is the metal veneers tin man uh, which also requires a lot of sanding to get up uh, to that nice shine then we can weather it and uh, get our little bit of a black acrylic installed in the front for the visor and yeah that'll be a nice looking helmet So 
so as I said, this is the same metal paint we used for the armor in my previous uh, episode of building this version of the Mandalorian's armor. So this is how it looks uh, when it's first sprayed on. You see it's this dull grey, so these are the replacement 3D printed gauntlets. Because this is kind of like, um, it's, it's almost like a resin. You do actually use resin when you mix it together. I do have a video showing you how to use this particular paint. Uh, it's just on its own, so if you wanted to see how it works, and do look at that video. It's called How to Use Metal Veneer Paint. So metal veneers do come in different colours. This one's Tin Man, so we've got the silver one. So it basically is like part paint, part resin, and also has metal powder in it, which is what gives it the shine. So that's what it looks like when you first spray it on. And here's an example of how it looks just going over with 800, so obviously not uh, the final grit to go over with. But this is just taking up some of the shine, you can see it coming through already, it looks like brushed aluminium. When it's not, it's actually just paint covering on a 3D printed prop. And I think it looks really, really nice. So obviously now we've got to go over 1200. So some sections we've got to go over with a lower grit. So like here you can see there are some drips on the paint. So go over that with 600, smooth that out as much as possible. Then go over that with 800 and then finish it off with 1200 and you wet sand this. Because you want to wet sand paint. That's the, always the best method for paint. Uh, then once you've done the 1200 grit, then you have to polish it and that gives it the really nice smooth shine that we have in the, uh, the rest of the armour that we've already done. So let's just uh, skip ahead to the cool bit.
And this is what I got so far on the pistol. I uh, got a little bit of the metal paint just on the tip here, see it's just covered with the masking tape and went back over it with a primer and just roughly sprayed the handle, just kind of like a, a brown colour. I didn't have like a light brown, I only got a dark one, so what I've done is I've actually sprayed it with brown and then very lightly gone over it with a bronze paint I have. So now I've just got to tape off that area here, obviously on the other side, and then spray the rest of this black and just going to hand paint on some silver highlights. after <laughs> well technically not that long waiting um but like a week and a half yeah i expected it to be here in a few days um it took its time finally got this is the uh the perspex for the visor uh the, literally the last bit i've been waiting on and the reason why this video is later out than it is intended to be <laughs> but we got it now uh, so this is um a nice sort of dark black one. As you can see, it's still pretty see-through. When we get it in the helmet, it will appear a bit, a bit darker, but I am anticipating having to back this with a nice mirrored tint so there is no way you can see inside it, and I've got some still really clear vision. Um, so, the trick with this is now actually um, fitting it in the helmet. Um, I don't know if it's better to cut it first and then heat form it, or heat form it then cut it. I'm gonna try and heat form it first I think. Kind of squidge it in where I need it to go and then trim it. I think that might be the best way because I'm scared of trimming it and then if I've trimmed too much and then I heat form it you've got gaps. I do have another sheet, a spare sheet, but I don't want to mess it up too much so let's get our bucket and we're gonna get our heat gun. Okay so the issue we got with this lovely baby is of course the shape of the cheeks. Here's the inside of the print and you can see We've kind of got that bulge on the cheeks there. So it's going to affect like how much visor we have sort of in the front part. So we're just going to have to be really gentle with it and heat it up and just sort of bend it in to fit. But also be careful if something's hot and you're putting it up against a 3D print. 3D prints can melt, so we've got to be really gentle with this. Also, when you're heating up plastic, make sure to have a respirator that does vapours because it will produce one hell of a stink and um, can produce toxic stuff in your lungs. Uh, so do be careful, open a window, which is what I'm going to do now, and wear a mask.
So there you go, that is taking the Cosplay Sky Mandalorian costume and turning it into a Beskar version with proper solid armour, 3D printed parts and re dyeing and retweaking some of the fabric bits. So their flight suit is really, really good for the price you pay. So I highly recommend getting the flight suit just to tweak it because you get all the straps and stuff with it. I'm still going to have to do some tweaks like the chest is a little bit loose. It's not quite sitting where I want it to at the moment. Um, and my arm bits do keep swiveling around because uh, they're a little bit loose. Uh, so just a bit of extra padding there. But that just comes with, this is actually kind of the first full fit I've done of the costume. So a couple of tweaks and it'll be pretty much ready to go. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this build. I'm sorry it took so long for it to come out. I really didn't want to rush the parts and some parts were delayed in getting here. But you know what, taking the time over it, look how pretty that looks. Look how shiny that is. Oh, you can see the reflection, that's you guys. There you go, you have the little camera on the tripod. You can see yourselves. And just, I quite like the weathering as well, like the scar. Again, as I said, this weathering is kind of based off of the end of season one look, just not as heavy, because I kind of still wanted a lot of the shiny best scar to come through. And obviously that's why we've got the Mudhorn Signet as well, which is a different color, because that was kind of like sticky outy from all the weathering. Uh, from the end of the season so I'm loving this I am loving this so if you are looking for a flight suit to make your own Mandalorian in costume and you're not sure where to get it Cosplay Sky have a really good one again just go back and look at the other videos if this is the first one you've seen which is weird because it's a part three but even if you have um, basically you don't have to do a huge amount of tweaking to the actual flight suit itself I re-dyed it, obviously added some more velcro parts to it. Most of the work was just in making the new sets of armor. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this build as of recording. It's uh, season two, episode three out tonight. So I'm probably gonna be sitting there watching this with my baby Yoda, because of course. This was gonna be a costume to bring out to my first troop since February. We were gonna do an outdoor troop, um, local to me, with a few other guys and second lockdown is hit so that's not going to be a thing now so this will be another costume that i have finished either just before or during lockdown that will not have anywhere to go just yet but hopefully there'll be a place for the mando to go in the near future so thank you very much for watching thank you as always has got to go out to my supporters on patreon if you'd like to support me on there help me uh, make cool stuff like this in the future links as always are at the end of my video and in the description down below you don't have to if you like what you see here please subscribe uh, like comment all that good stuff share it with friends if you want to every little bit helps i'll see you guys in the next video take care and there's just one more thing for me to say really this is the way.